Or is that they like, oh, you're a pro BMX rider? That's cool. And I'm like, yeah, but this is what I'm more about. I just happen to ride, love riding my bike. Um, I'm yeah. not trying to make money off BMX anymore. That's what I find is a big issue with people, why they don't succeed in the industry, is because they're looking at an industry that can't even really sustain itself. And I'm like, well, not at all. I'm like, well, why not like go outside of like this little shelter and like let's bring more attention to the, to the sport? I have nothing but respect for these competitors. Make no mistake, I am cocky in prediction. I am confident in preparation, but I am always humble in victory hey, or defeat. I say I'm everything and more, and you can't tell me any different. You knew rap is cool, but you fought from competition. The best white rapper to emerge since 9-11. Send me suicidal beats, I get them all into heaven. I got some poor with the man, I'll even pull for your man. Although we don't like my music, his girl's a hell of a fan. Today's Mike Jordan, but I'm fading from home. Right. I slam my That's chest like right. Harambe, they gain respect from the jungle. Said I'm the clutch man, I'm clutch man. Feeling like this. I'm off to meet my strength and conditioning coach at Athletic Lab in Cary, North Carolina. I'm gonna show my polar global gear and talk about some future plans for a program and what we're doing as far as my training when I get back in the gym. So, yeah, we're out. <laughs> Said we started on the down I met you right before the rise As the ego killed your vibe And that's when rolling came alive When shit started changing Then you said it's for the better With your fake ass You probably do it for the cheddar All this shit about you Ain't about the money All that real And now you switch to acting funny All these words you probably write are just to diss me I hope you know that I don't see it So it miss me Everyone, my name is Matt Hunter I'm a sports performance coach At Athletic Lab And I work with Josh Perry On any of his specific sports performance training. So that's physically being prepared for the sport of BMX. And Josh is a great athlete to work into that way. Because oh, a lot of guys <laughs> a lot of guys in BMX haven't necessarily made the transition to thinking of it as a sport of high performance. Um, there's obviously a huge amount of skill involved, but to keep pressing the sport forward into whether it's higher jumps, faster tricks, whatever it might be, that's where sports performance comes in. So the whole world of track and field, Olympic sports, places where sports performance and physical performance has been pushed as far as possible is what we're trying to integrate now into the sport of BMX. Thank you. Oh, that's all good, man. I appreciate the call. Heck yeah, dude. Congrats. But yeah, man, like you gotta do what's best for you is really what you're passionate about and you're making it happen. You're putting work into it and it's gonna bring well, value to you. Pretty much all your music that's available on iTunes, I have. Cool. Thanks for the support. Yeah, uh -huh. of course, man. I don't want to like pay for like Spotify, Pandora. Like if I'm into a band or an artist, like I'll just, I'll just buy their album instead and then I have it. Um, and it helps them too. Well, thanks. Thanks, man. That means a lot. Yeah, um, of course. 40 North instead. We're doing YouTube videos every day. Do you still, are you still interested in my music? Yeah, for sure. I was like, well, I want to do it my way. I don't know, it's a little different. But, so that being said, I have three series I'm working on. Cause like, you know me, like, I my message of like my why is why I'm doing it all. Like what I believe in, what I stand for. And I think it's very transparent for everyone that knows me and follows me. So like, that's why I'm doing the Quest to Progress series. But like, that's my take on progression of a human in life on and off the bike. and all my passions with nutrition, fitness, positive thinking, and then all that stuff. So mine's like not even geared towards BMX. I just use BMX as my right. vehicle to like, people know me and to get me in the doors of the, like, oh, you're a pro BMX rider, that's cool. And I'm like, yeah, but this is what I'm more about. I just happen to ride, love riding my bike. Um, yeah. I'm not trying to make money off BMX anymore. That's what I find is a big issue with people, why they don't succeed in the industry, is because they're looking at an industry that can't even really sustain itself. And I'm like, well, not at all. I'm like, well, why not like go outside of like this little shelter and like let's bring more attention to the, to the sport and also also like let's bring more dollars to ourselves from brands that make millions of dollars, you know? And like that's exactly what I'm doing. Like stuff that's outside of the sport just oh, yeah. makes so much more sense. So my thing is more about my message of like brain health and positive, healthy image. And I know John and Mike told me they weren't really down with like that path I was taking as they worded it and I just Dude, I don't see the value yeah. in like the whole street like grungy thing because it just it just limits them more and I get I talked to these brands like just started working with me and they were like yeah if you're like anything like the snowboarders and skaters we've tried to work with in the past 
we don't want to work with you but we got that right away from your email and your social media that that's not what you do and so that's why we're really interested in working with you also you didn't ask for anything you just asked for a conversation of how we could collaborate together like they told me they don't want to work with action sports athletes anymore because of the image that they you know they promote and I was like well clearly you notice like that's not what I'm about I'm about the opposite so I'm not the same girl you met when you met me I got my life going I don't sweat you I let you get thoughts I save the feelings work and sweat so I don't waste my time I get some arrow with a smile is all I want for mine I feel that happiness you have is temporary the top is lonely and What's cool about Adam and a lot of other pro riders in BMX and the sport of BMX in general is like I've been able to make my dream come true as well as meet the heroes and the people I looked up to growing up, you know, like Adam makes all his own music and he does all the music for his videos for the most part. And I remember specifically growing up watching one of the videos and his video part to it. This is when I was like 15 and I was just super stoked on all the riders, especially his, and I learned that he made the music for his video part. He's really creative and it shows in his riding and his music. It's just great to see him combine both of them. It's amazing to give back to BMX in a way that he sees fit and he believes in and it's just great. So, that's what's up. Hey, how's it going? I, uh, instead of doing daily ones, I was thinking about just doing like a weekly, like, what I do, what, like, so I've been driving around, like, shit, I don't know how to set this up. Is it the Gorilla Pod? Yeah. I'm like new to all this stuff, so right. my friend, my business partner was like, you need to check out this Gary dude. He's awesome. And I was like, alright, and then like, month now, I've been soaking everything in and like, yeah. doing what he says, and it works. Yeah, I knew, um, I had a family friend who, like, was running one day, and he was running weird and actually yeah, got checked out and he had a two brain tumor. It's gnarly. Wow. I wish like medicine was more like, I wish like everyone could just get like a full body scan sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My um, my mom has uh, stage four breast cancer right now. So like that's what me and like, the whole like you just never know man. Yeah. Like, it's, just, it's just crazy. And I feel like the same thing with like my like meet 100 people thing too. Like. Yeah, I was trying to look into that a little bit, and I kind of was getting the idea for it. That's what I want to ask you about, too. Like, yeah, it's just like, I just had an, or I got the idea of, um, from this kid, uh, his name's Rob Lawless in Philly. Uh, I did a story on him when I was in, on TV in Philly, and he's trying to meet 10,000 people oh, okay. for one hour each. I'm not trying to meet 10,000 people, but I'm trying to meet, it's like, I, I just want to be different and, like, meet people. Yeah. It's like, I'll do 100 people, and, like, I met one person, I was like, all right, I'll do it, and then... I so think, how many people have you done now? Um, I would say like 55, maybe 54. Cool. Yeah, it, it's taking a while though. So what are you doing? Are you writing a story? Are you filming? I'm just posting on Instagram. Or? Okay, like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. So it's, okay. social media. Social media. So, That's yeah. cool. It's definitely something different too. Yeah, just like document like who like who I met with and stuff. That's sick. Yeah, it's just it's cool. It's, it's amazing. Like, I mean, it's a Gary Vee thing. Like, show people you care. And just like meet people. It's like. You never know where a conversation leads you. Dude, like, you never know, like, did you, in your wildest dream, think of me meeting, like, hanging out with Dave Mira, like... Oh, no. Damn, man, that, that's how big your tumor was? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, eight no. centimeters long by two wide, two deep. Damn. And now I have four little, less than blueberry-sized ones that two regrew back. Are they still on the other side of my brain, yeah, and then two are from that surgery that... That surgery was on a main artery, so they, couldn't, they? they couldn't risk hitting it, so the cells rejuvenated, and that's my gamma Now those two are shrinking. Now I have to have Gamma Knife on the other two this year sometime. Oh, really? So it's, it's not like, like, that's what my message is, is like, I'm, so are, like, I'm is still it, riding. Is that, like, as intense as, like, regular surgery, like the surgery you had there, or no? That one was open cranial surgery, okay. the main one, because it was, they, there was nothing, like, they were like, you can take it out, or you could wait a month and you probably die. Yeah. I, I got really lucky, I hit my head then. Because yeah. they're like, if you kept, because I was also going blind, I was pushing on my optic nerve. That shit. And the doctor, Damn, the eye doctor was like, no, your vision's fine. I was like, clearly I can't see you, so something's wrong. And then that fall, it would be on and off. And it was just about the pressure. And then one day I could ride, and then I was trying a new trick, over-rotated, fell and whiplash my head, got knocked out. Had to get an MRI. Yeah. And that's when they were like, yeah. So some, the way he told me, it was like, so we got your MRI results back. And I was like, and? Then, well, there's something in there that shouldn't be there. And I was like, oh, fuck. Really? And I didn't even think tumor or anything, and I was like, whoa. And then he was like, yeah, it's a tumor, and I was like, oh, shit, my, everything just shut down, and I stopped this thing, and I walked out, and uh, yeah, that's pretty crazy, yeah, that, that's how, I, if I didn't fall in my head that day, I would have kept just, you know, I was actually talking with the woman from the Brain Tumor Society, yeah. and I was like, yeah, it got so so bad that I was having a couple beers a night just to alleviate the pain, she was like, you know why? The alcohol is one of the only things with 
besides, I think, frankincense oil, an essential oil that can break the blood brain barrier, and it was alleviating the pressure. Because mm. I was like, every beer I would drink, the pressure would go away, the headaches would stop, yeah. and I wouldn't even be drunk, I'd be normal. Yeah. And she was like, that's why, and I, I don't drink anymore, but I had learned a lot about the brain and stuff. Yeah, but yeah, it's gnarly. If I didn't hit it's my crazy. head that day, it's crazy. I potentially wouldn't be here. You can fall in life, whether it's an injury, an illness, a job, let go, or a fire, or anything. But that your character shows when you get up, you try again. And like yeah. I learned that indirectly from BMX, not really knowing it until now. We fail more times in a day than most people are willing to fail in a lifetime. Yeah, just no. to learn a new trick. I've I've taken years to learn one trick, and one day it clicks. One day it happens first try, and then I lose it. Like I. The loneliness gets scary. I know it sounds negative, but I swear it's not. I hope you kill your competition and you never stop. Go our own ways. Go our. Go our own ways. Go our. Then it's time to go our own. I'm uh, David Grzbowski. I'm a reporter at uh, CBS North Carolina here in Raleigh. I uh, reached out to Josh to meet up because uh, I'm doing this thing called NC100 Friends. I'm trying to meet 100 people in and around North Carolina. So if you're in Durham, if you're in Raleigh, Chapel Hill, or where you live, Apex. Apex. Same thing. Uh, just trying to meet people. Uh, when I first moved here in September, my struggle was just seeing how people like live down here and how they roll. So my goal was just trying to meet people uh, and just have a conversation, talk about life, learn about people, your situation, what you're doing, trying to change, you know, you know, what you went through and everything, and just just trying to meet people, be positive. I'm trying to spread positivity, love, and and everything else. Yeah. In life, that's what it's all about. That's the theme you'll be noticing a lot of these yeah. people all trying to do the same thing. Sure. Well, man, why Boom. Go out. Then it's time to go out. Oh. Go out, then it's time to go out.